Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to do another round of recent reads. This time I'm talking about thrillers and horror and I have some popular books to talk about as well as some hopefully more underhyped, lesser known ones to put on your radar. All that being said, let's get started. First, let's talk thrillers and I read one that I think a lot of you will be excited for and that is Red Dragon by Thomas Harris, which is the first book in the series that of course includes Silence of the Lamb. I have not watched any of the movies. I have not read Silence of the Lamb at the time of filming this and I will say that I liked Red Dragon, which if you don't know is a thriller about a serial killer that is on the loose. There's a detective that has been called back from retirement in order to help track them down. This FBI agent was previously responsible for putting other serial killers in jail, particularly one who is known as Hannibal. He was known for his grisly and gruesome crimes and so they're looking for this FBI agent to once again bring his expertise to the case and hopefully track down this man who is known as the Red Dragon. And I really like the setup of this one. So it almost reads like it's a sequel and so I actually had to go back and double check the reading order of this series but my understanding is everyone says to start with Red Dragon because at the beginning of this you find out that this FBI agent has been scarred and has a lot of trauma from the experience of tracking down this killer and it became very personal and so he has this relationship or this connection to Hannibal and so he has basically stepped down from being an FBI agent because of the aftermath of all the things that caused him to get to that point and get that serial killer in jail and so he reluctantly goes back to the police force to assist in this case but he does so like I said very reluctantly and so I love the setup of that. I love this connection between Hannibal and this FBI agent and there's a lot of suggestion that they're actually two sides of the same coin that they're very similar and the reason that the agent was able to catch Hannibal was because they are kind of the same person so absolutely love the premise of this one I love the scenes with Hannibal it was definitely grisly and dark and while it is fictional it is very much influenced from real serial killer cases and it really felt like that so it almost felt like reading a true crime book but in a very good way so it was detail oriented. There was lots of talk of forensics and just different profiling which I find absolutely fascinating. It's also very impressive that this book was written before all of that became so popular and yeah it was just very well done. But what didn't work as well for me was the actual serial case itself surrounding the Red Dragon because I found Hannibal to be way more interesting than the Red Dragon and I was actually kind of disappointed when I realized that Hannibal was not really in this one as much as I would have liked. So again, I'm planning on continuing on with the series and definitely excited to read Silence of the Lamb, which pretty much everyone says is a lot better. I think it's going to have a lot more focus on Hannibal, which is what I'm looking for. So this one just wasn't quite what I expected it to be and it was an interesting case. I like all the pieces, but I want them to fit together a little bit differently, which again is what I think I'm going to get with the sequel. So let me know uh, down below uh, what you think. Um, possibly by the time you're watching this, I might have already read the sequel, but we'll we'll see about that. All right, moving on. Now switching over to horror, I read The Godsend by Bernard Taylor. This is a vintage horror piece that follows a family with a few kids of their own. They come across a strange woman with her own child, and through circumstances, they end up taking that child into their own care. This child appears to be quite sweet, this little adorable girl. However, once they take her in, terrible things start to happen to their own family. And you start to wonder if it is just bad luck, bad parenting, or if there is more going on. Now, I picked up this book with a lot of high expectations because I previously read his other book, The Reaping, and absolutely loved it. It's one of my favorites. And this book definitely reads the same way. It has a very comforting narrative. It's almost written in a cozy style, and you almost just have to try it for yourself. You'll either like it or you don't. But for me, I really enjoy the way he tells a story. And so I liked the book in that regard. It's also very similar to The Reaping, but I will say it's not quite as good. What this book is, is very predictable. You're going to know where the story is going and I've definitely seen those tropes so many times since then. I understand of course this book was written ways back before a lot of the modern horror books I've read um, that you know use those same tropes so I need to acknowledge that. 
but this book really plays on the idea of is it bad parenting or is there more going on? And what surprised me about this is that while it involves a kid that is possibly the source of all of this trouble, the child themselves do not appear to be creepy. And so if you're looking for this story that's going to involve this creepy child just creeping around the corner and acting really strange, you're not going to get that. It's much more about the larger story and the question of is anything actually happening at all. So I don't want to say too much more. I'll let you experience it for yourself. If you're a fan of Vintage Horror, if you're a fan of Bernard Taylor, I would recommend this one. It's not his best, but it's definitely worth checking out in my opinion. After that, I read The Hollow Places by T. King Fisher, and this is a story of a recently divorced woman who goes to work in her uncle's strange shop where he collects all of these supposedly supernatural paranormal objects that are cursed, etc. And she goes to work there and then through circumstances there ends up being a hole that is broken through the wall and her and a friend go in and investigate what is behind that and the story follows what they find in those hollow places. This is a book I picked up as a buddy read with some friends and honestly I wouldn't have picked it up on my own because I knew enough about the premise and the setup that it's not the kind of horror I'm typically drawn to. This felt very fantastical and actually read to me more like portal fantasy and what didn't work for me so much is that the narrative is very light and almost jolly, it's a bit satirical, and it's meant to be very funny. There are some good social commentary quotes that are kind of sprinkled throughout that I did find, you know, kind of made me smirk. But when I go into horror books, I typically am looking for a more serious story, and I didn't get that. I just, I never worried for the characters and all the things that I'm looking for. So it's very much a case that this is not a bad book, but it's just not a book for me. So if you like the premise, if you've read the author before, absolutely go check them out. I'm not going to discourage anyone from doing so, but if you share my taste, this one might kind of miss the mark for you as well. From there, I picked up Closing Costs by Bracken McLeod, and this is a book I received for review actually through NetGalley. And this one I was very excited to pick up because I've read the author before and really enjoyed them. The basic premise is that we follow a couple who are living in their new home. Something happens, the husband goes out, and while he's away, a man comes into the house and holds the woman hostage. And it is basically a home invasion story. And if you don't know, I really Really, really like home invasion stories, whether it be on screen or in books. I find the situation absolutely terrifying. I can always picture myself as the victims and it just always, always gets my attention when I hear about a story like this. So I went in with really high expectations because like I said, I've read the author before and in the past I would describe him as a very good storyteller. He writes the kind of books that just keep me flipping the pages and from the start of this book it very much started out well. I was intrigued, I was excited, I was worried for this woman who was getting tied up and like I said, it was hitting all of my buzzwords when it comes to these kind of thriller horror books. But what didn't work for me was how the story progress. So I don't want to give away too much, but you find out it's told over a few timelines, one being the present day when this is happening, but a lot of the story is actually told beforehand when they're in the process of buying the house, which is where the title of the book comes from. And it just didn't completely work for me. There's a lot of backstory that just wasn't particularly compelling. There's a lot of moving parts and it just didn't come together as a cohesive narrative in my mind. I did appreciate there was some good commentary about infertility and things like that, which I always appreciate when it's sprinkled into a book. But overall, I was kind of left disappointed because there was so much backstory in this one that it took away from the tension and suspense that I wanted of the home invasion itself. And like I said, when I go into a book like this, I want to be terrified. I want to be worried for the victims. I want to picture myself as them. And that kind of got lost along the way, which is unfortunate to say. And finally, I read some horror manga, and that was Lullabies from Hell by Hadishi Hino. Hopefully, I didn't butcher his name too much. This is a horror author that was recommended to me because of my great love of horror manga from Junji Ito, and so, of course, I was looking for other authors to check out that do similar work. 
And definitely I will say that this author's work is quite different than him. So if you're looking for just a, if you like Genji Ito, you should read this person's manga. I don't think that's the case, but I was definitely intrigued. I'd never heard of them before. And I was so delighted that my library had one of their illustrated work available. So I immediately checked it out. What it is, is four short stories. And as always, some of them worked better for me than others. In terms of the artwork, again, they're very different than Genji Ito if you're coming from that perspective. I will say that these ones are more cartoony in style, and if anything, I would compare them to something like Lenore if you have read those horror comics. But these ones, while they definitely have a cute aspect to them, they're also very creepy. So two of the stories really stuck out for me. One is a pseudo biography or memoir of the author where he is recounting his childhood, but it is this twisted version where he is obsessed with horror, which is probably true, but some of the events that happen, you know that it draws into the fictional realm. And I very much enjoyed the play on that one, like Creepy Kids, all of that works so well for me. The other story that I really enjoyed was really strange and out there, and again, maybe does have some appeal to people who like the weird side of Genji Ito's work. So in this one, it's about a couple that are having a child, and through circumstances, they end up possibly giving birth to a lizard baby, and it's just so weird and yeah I kind of loved it it was just out there and unexpected some of the other stories I thought were a little bit more predictable things that I've read before but that's pretty much always the case with short stories so I would definitely recommend checking out this author see if your library has any of their collection this is again the story that was available to me or the collection I was able to get but I definitely would read more of their work if I was able to find it online you know in an economical way to read it. So I'm very impressed by it. I thought it was a lot of fun. And again, I'm always, always looking for more horror manga. So if you have recommendations, please, please leave them down below. So that's it. We've made it to the end of the video. I would love your opinions on the books I talked about. Which ones are you interested in checking out? Don't forget to recommend me any horror manga that you think I would enjoy, as well as give me your opinions on the Silence of the Lamb movies, and as well as the book. I also want to know what you think of the Hannibal TV show, because I'm interested in all of that, and hopefully we'll be getting to it very soon. If you have not yet subscribed, please do so. I do read a lot of thrillers, horror, as well as science fiction and fantasy. And you can help me out by giving this video a thumbs up, sharing it around online, and if you hit that notification bell, you'll never miss a video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.